Hello everyone, Derek Floyd here, Beautiful Now Podcast. Welcome to another edition of Chasing the Impossible. This is the segment where I interview special guests who seem to have accomplished impossible things with their life to let you know that guess what, no matter how impossible it seems, you can do it too. If you enjoy this kind of inspirational content, please let us know by hitting us with a like or subscribe on the channel you're watching. This helps us get the most updated content to you as soon as it's available. Also, if you really enjoy it and want to help us out, you want someone else to know, hit a big fat share right now. Share the experience right now with a friend so that someone else can be uplifted, encouraged, and inspired too. Now today we have an incredible special guest who happened to have started a computer accessory products company all based on Mac products early on, but he's done some amazing things and he started when he was 14 years old because he had a love for technology. Can you imagine that? 14 years old starting your own company. Hey, if he can do it, so can you. He started the company OWC, Other World Computing, and I bet you're going to really enjoy his story. Will you please help me welcome my good friend, Mr. Larry Connor. Now, Larry, are you out there for me, buddy? Talk to me. Hey, how you doing, Derek? Online and ready to go. There he is. How are you, brother? You good out there? Hey, so far, so good. It's, it's you know, we're, we're keeping things moving and you know, definitely excited for uh, you know, what 2021 is going to bring and getting past, well, hopefully getting back to some new normal. Oh, man. And this COVID thing, isn't it insane? Like, what what ha- what did the world change to, right? You know, it, it's it's a, it's really incredible when you look at just how everybody's adapted and it's, you know, almost you, you kind of I've kind of I, I can't really say that it's it's hard to believe where we were a year ago and you know, what we're doing today and, and how much we have to look forward to that we used to take for granted, you know, really not all that long ago at all. It's so true. It's so true. And I, I tell my family and everybody, I say, you know, this is a tough time, but there's some blessings in there. And we just got to make sure we stay focused on the positive and, and get through this time because it's not going to end anytime soon. You know, it's all about perspective, right? True, true. And, you know, life is good. The bottom line is life is good. And if anything, you know, you, you really have a lot more you can appreciate and realize how much there is to appreciate having well, dealt with this whole COVID thing. Mm-hmm. So true. So true. Um, you and your family safe, everybody good, everybody well? Yeah, so far so good. I mean, you know, we follow protocols, you know, our, you know my extended family, I consider OWC, all, all our team members there, you know, by and large, you know, we've definitely, we've done a lot to make sure everybody's safe. We got ahead of this, you know, really, really early, took it serious, make sure that we had all the good PPE gear in place, had folks with the temperature scans, you know, protocols to separate you know, keep separation between individuals. I mean, made some really rapid adjustments so that we could keep operating and keep our team members safe. Safety is That's so good. You know, it's so good. It's, so good. So good. Wow. But you got to do. Yeah, you have to now. Well, man, let's go ahead and get into the interview. Uh, and again, thank you for taking the time for us. Uh, you know, you've done some amazing things with OWC starting off at 14 years old. Like, what? Uh, you know, that's pretty amazing. Uh, was technology always your passion from the get? Or did you have another something you wanted to do, some sports or something like that? You know, I've always enjoyed numbers. I enjoy science. You know, technology kind of fit right into that, you know, kind of a transition from taking different electronics apart to actually doing something productive with the electronics and making what was there better. So it's, it kind of all fit into a pattern. I mean, the, you know, programming and, and numbers and, you know, tinkering and electronics computers. So, you know, certainly in sports, I mean, I grew up in the country, grew up in the middle of nowhere, quite frankly, which was fantastic. You know, got to be outside, got the, you know, for lack of a better term, you know, playing the, the mud, playing the dirt. And this was, you probably wouldn't, if you looked at my uh, youth, it, it, it would be even more surprising that OWC grew, you know, grew from that foundation. Wow. Wow. So I heard your dad was the one who started off like with referrals, kind of getting you going on the business. Cause at 14, you, I'm sure you were just like, how do I get this going? Uh, you know, who was, who was the most influential person in your beginning and what kind of advice did they give you to kind of get you going? You know, I can't say that I had a lot of advice, you know, and, but I didn't necessarily need it. I worked for my dad you know, f- for about five, six years before you know, actually deciding that I, I wanted to be off on my own and had an opportunity to go off on my own. But the experience I got working for him, the work ethic, you know, the exposure to technology and, and his you know, small business, you know, really you know, had a huge impact, but you know, his, you know, the, the name of his company, I should say that the theme of his company was, it was in the paper industry and is, 
you know, our word is our bond, you know, kind of a play on, you know, bond mm-hmm. is kind of paper. But, you know, <laughs> nice. It, that whole uh, you know, experience, it was, I couldn't have had a better role model. And, you know, without that experience, I, I, you know, it's hard to, who knows, how to say, you know, where I would have gone or what I would have, there's so many, I mean, everybody out there has got so many opportunities, certainly in, in this country. And I, I'm glad I was able to, to have the experiences I had that led to OWC. But it really goes back to uh, my mom. You know, my, my parents won, a, they won an Atari 400 XL back in, I believe it was 80, maybe 81. Had to go back and look at those, that timing. <laughs> and it was a door prize. It was an event they went to and they came home with this computer that you know, was not a business computer, but also not a, a game system. It had a cassette deck you know, for storing your programs. And my mom, you know, effectively that, that now we had in the then we my dad was in the tech. He had a we had you know a console so we had a he had a pong game way back uh, <laughs> good way old back pong. Then, but, yeah, you know, that was a <laughs> there was a racing game on it. It was, you know, this black and white. It was fun. It didn't have to be complicated, it was fun. But <laughs> this Atari 400 XL was for one purpose only, and that was for gonna learn how to program on it, gonna learn how you know this technology works. And you know, she you know held to that and I'm really glad she did. Wow. Wow. So it sounds like mom and dad were probably the most influential per- people as you began, no? You know, little, you know, how to say decision points that made a, a huge, huge difference. And it'd be about a year after we got that computer that you know, my dad needed. I overheard him talking you know, about an issue he had with his TRS-80, on you know, the good old Trash-80. It was a, <laughs> it was a math uh, problem you know, because he dealt with international and the, the units that you know, were dealt with in the U.S. didn't didn't line up, and that the software didn't support these foreign units. And as I overheard it, I said, "Yeah, I, I can do that." He was talking to me on the phone. You know, have him come out and you know, write some special code. I said, "It was looked at the code, and you know, I actually got my first programming job." <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> and this will, will also lead to OWC being born. I went from getting the program and and tinker to and it worked. By the way, I mean, I I, I, I don't know today that he'd go back. And do it again. I, I mean, that knowledge is buried, and perhaps uh, <laughs> age and whatnot. I mean, I think it's interesting uh, the things that change over the course of time. But nonetheless, went from that kind of opportunity to mostly we'll data entry. But again, the exposure, the work ethic that that was still there. But doing data entry, uh, it was not quite. You know, wasn't my favorite uh, way to spend time. <laughs> I can definitely understand that. That kind of seemed like it'd be tedious, you know. And you seem like a creative person with multiple layers to be able to do a lot of things. So, but you did it, and it brought you to where you are now, which is OWC. Uh, you know, from zero to 125 million—that's a pretty big number, right? It sounds pretty incredible. Yeah, that was last year. That was last year. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. So, uh, but every business has its ups and downs. That's that's a no-brainer. Um, what would you consider maybe one of the downs uh, or losses that helped you learn a lesson about business? You know, there's been, I mean, over three decades, there's been you know, substantial uh, opportunities to learn and go through various, uh, you know, fantasy learning lessons. The biggest, uh, you know, probably came in the, the mid nineties when you know, we were just growing like gangbusters, you know, gone online, you know, we had, more people starting, and but the big thing you know, was also a big influx of customers. And you know, we're always very trustful of, of people. I mean, you have to be. I mean, trust is how you, know, you build relationships, and that's a two way street. But for the first time, we got hit with just massive credit card fraud. We had mm. never seen anything like it. Had never even experienced a little bit of fraud. And suddenly, it's like ninety six. So the you know, the word must have gotten out, and suddenly, you know, we you know we were a target. You know, the, re- the response to that was to build systems and put uh, infrastructure in place that you know, would keep our good customers, you know, flowing and not, uh, how do I say, you know, penalize those folks, but also make sure we weren't shipping stuff to people that you know, weren't the card holders, so to speak. But that almost put us out and under. And you know, in general, I- I'd say a policy that definitely has been a foundation for OWC and the only way you can go forward, and this is from experience with other companies too. I mean, I was a customer of you know, various places, I mean, obviously, and experiencing, you know, let me say, really restrictive policies that made you jump through hoops to be somebody's customer, you know, really wasn't favorable to the customer experience. 
and return policies that were focused on, you know, one that I'd ask, why do you have a policy like this? Well, this guy did this or that, and we're gonna make sure that never happens again. Mm. Now, it is important to hold you know, people accountable, but you don't wanna have policies from, let's just say your 0.1% you know, of worst customers that affect you know, the 99.9% .9 of your customers that you know, are truly ex exceptional customers and why you're here. So mm -hmm. I've worked really hard, you know, even through some, some tough experiences in some areas where, you know, yeah, that, that hurt us, but have come through those you know, and really you know, learned and made sure that you know, we still respect and understand, hey, that's, you, you don't set policies you know, based on the bad apples. I mean, you're here to support you know, the folks that, that are making you who you are and what you are and you know why your company is here i mean if we if people ran companies like laws got passed i mean i just look at some of the laws on the books it's like you know you you don't want to you know there's there's laws on the books especially for business that you're effectively guilty to your proven to you prove yourself Deep innocent, innocent. I mean, yeah it's terrible i mean you have to prove yourself as it's part of the uh, it's part of the policy they assume you're guilty unless you put all the filings in place to prove why, you know, that you have dotted all the I's, crossed all the T's and done everything that you're already required to do. And, you know, that just doesn't work in, in business. It's certainly not a customer experience that anybody wants to go through. Mm. So it sounds to me like you learned through losses to rebuild your customer experience, to make sure they were treated fairly. You found the, the policies that worked in place and, and made sure that everyone, even those that were maybe not the good apples, you treated everyone the same and made sure that it was it was a solid procedure thrown through, through for the returns, the whole nine. Uh, and that's built you a great customer base, no? Absolutely. Again, there are customers that we wish upon our competitors, but you know, we don't, <laughs> but our policies don't reflect those, you know, how to say those, you know, that, that really small minority. You know, mm. it's, again, it's a two way street. You know, we certainly want folks that, you know, we want folks to come to us. We want, we want them to, to want to come to us as well. But it's, mm. it, it was, it's, it's sometimes it's tough because you look at, you know, there's always those that, Look, we, we trust everybody you know, in, implicitly, and it, it's hard. I mean, it's it's sometimes sure, it's really sure. difficult because some of the worst out there are the most convincing. But again, <laughs> it's such a small percentage. If you set your policies around those that that sliver of customers, mm. you know, you're not going to be there. The other thing you know, along the way, you know, even when things were really, I mean, the, again, ninety six, ninety seven, were it was a real rough time. It would have been really easy to you know, take advantage of protections that were out there, but that would have hurt our suppliers mm -hmm. and other you know, folks that, that were partners of OWC. So we, you know, bottom line is, you know, believed in the future and knew we could get there. As long as we were going to continue going to the future, we were going to meet our obligations. And you know, we want partners. I mean, it's customers for life. It's, it's team members for life. And it's certainly, uh, what I say, our, our, those that you know, we depend on our partners you know, need to be there for life as well. And we were glad to continue. Uh, we made good on our obligations. And we've got folks that, I mean, that loyalty, again, it's a two-way street. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as OWC went forward, you know, a lot of respect also came you know, to us for what we did with the you know, different companies that saw other situations that you know, didn't work out quite the same. Well, that brings us, as you said, to important with team members. You know, how important is it to, to build a strong leadership team around you as you're building a new company? Um, because you're going to have to move and shake and have a lot of decisions made, and you're going to need a team that you can trust. How important was it to you to build that team and have that solidness around you? You know, that team you know, came together, you know, pretty uh, naturally and organically. And, you know, this, when stuff flows, you know, you almost don't realize, you know, how great the people are around you. You know, until you, you know, how to say, have somebody that's not doing everything you expect, and the team and being able to count on, you know, everybody around you is absolutely, you know, critical. Even if it's not just the leadership. I mean, and the leadership certainly has a huge impact, you know, through the entire ranks. But you know, one customer service rep, you know, if if the customer's talking to that person, that person is the face of the company, mm -hmm. and it's you know, but the hardest thing is, and that's trust and delegation over time, which you have to do if you're going to grow, you have to do if you're going to take care of every customer, but it can be, you know, really tough when somebody has a bad day. And I will say customer support is probably one of the hardest jobs out there in any company. <laughs> for sure. For sure. You know, folks come yeah. with customer support with things that have, and, you know, sometimes, you know, in, in, a, in a bad way with things that have nothing to do with their experience, you know, with you. I mean, it's mm -hmm. you know, other things and it can often be brought along for the ride. 
And one, you know, how to say bad experience or one, one word out of, out of churn can, can create an unnecessary, a, a perception that isn't just, you know, between that person and that rep, but is effectively, you know, well, it's the whole company that's X, Y, Z. So that's, that's also kind of tough. I, we take that stuff. I mean, we, we want every customer happy and anybody who's unhappy. I mean, I, I still take personally today and you know, absolutely. Wow. I mean, our goal is the intentions are, you know, certainly to have every customer happy and, you know, we certainly have put, you know, the empowerment and the, uh, and we have the operation to see that executes as well. And I will well, put one like other, you know, go ahead. I do one other pretty good, uh, you know, something definitely learned over the course as well. And that has to do with, again, it goes back to taking care of customers. And I, I'll smile today when somebody, uh, you know, points to something that's going on behind the scenes, but customers, and, and they shouldn't, I mean, it's not, the, the, their issue is, you know, you've made a commitment, you know, to do something, to deliver a service, a product, whatever it may be. If there's something going on behind the scenes that's impacting that, they don't want to hear about it. And they shouldn't hear about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, we used to, you know, publish pretty tight ETAs on, on certain products, you know, based on what somebody would tell us. I mean, and that left us exposed if, you know, one of our partners didn't deliver. And we learned over time to really adjust how we, you know, the commitments we make, you know, and that has to do with delivery services, has to do with suppliers, to make sure that you know, not only can we absolutely meet commitments we make, but ideally even have the opportunity to exceed. And even even so, then that's you know there's a balancing not really a balancing act. It's a kind of it is a I guess a slightly delicate balance. We want people to have the highest expectations for everything that we're going to do. At the same time, we still need to have a little room to exceed those expectations, even though they're high to begin with. Otherwise, and you know saw this you know, about 20 years ago. If we exactly need you know what we commit and never actually exceed those the expectations we set mm -hmm. and we might actually be judged negative for that. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd, I'd watched a company that was horrible. Absolutely. A hor I mean, these guys are gone. They're long gone. They were, I mean, they were just, they even had a 900 number at one point oh, that I oh, for, wow. for because it, it was, they were an interesting organization, <laughs> but they were beating us on some of their, you know, we still use biz rate today, but, they're beating us in some of the biz rate scores. I said, how in the world can this be possible? <laughs> and I looked at the comments and, you know, we're, we're delivering in, you know, two to three days shipping right away. Mm -hmm. And they're delivering, you know, sometimes in a couple of weeks. And the comment really came down to, they had such low expectations from their customers, just beating an expectation, just they got there, it was good, it was enough for them to get scores that were, in my opinion, a little bit out of proportion. So, we made some slight adjustments to how we communicated things and left ourselves. We still made very high commitments, but you know, left ourselves, you know, room to uh, still exceed those things. I mean, which I mean, we regularly do, and certainly uh, seek to do, and that really uh, it made a big difference. And it was nothing against our customers. It's just, you know, if you, if you go to your favorite, you know, restaurant, and whatnot, and everything's perfect all the time. I mean, it's mm -hmm. yeah, it was fine. Nothing, nothing out of the ordinary. I mean, it becomes an expectation. We want high expectations, but it's still good to have a little room to, to still exceed that. <laughs> well, that brings us to the question. And with so many technical companies out there, a lot of people are doing similar to what you do. What makes OWC stand out? What's the, the, the one thing you can say that, hey, we're different than the rest of the, the bunch? You know, What makes you stand out? I really believe that's our focus on the customer, and that's not just you know, on the delivery side, all the solutions that we manufacture, design, engineer, really come down to the feedback that we've gotten from our customers. How can we build a solution that you know, makes their day better, lets them spend more time being creative, let them spend more time with their family because they get their work done sooner. You know, we're listening to our customers. You know, we have real passion and, and energy that we put into everything that we build, make, and ship, and you know, before the sale, after the sale, you know, certainly during the sale, you know, whether it's you know, through OWC Direct or through one of our partners, you know, we really support these solutions and make sure that our customers know that we're there and always going to be there. I mean, we, we continue and you know, we're not building things that are trying to sell somebody on, you know, the, the latest, you know, you know, you know whiz bang gadget. You know, <laughs> we're building solutions that, you know, we support as long as they have, you know, a purpose. You know, we 
are really focused on extending the life of existing technology so that you have a workflow that works, you have a system that's in place that's, that's doing what it needs to do. You know, we continue to support that. You can add to it, you can enhance it. You, know, you don't have to replace it. You know, we're not asking you to, uh, to take everything that's already been working great and replace it with something new. I mean, we really want to be part of an overall solution that you know, provides a good value, has longevity. You know, we don't believe in planned obsolescence or disposability. It, it comes down to, I mean, we want to we, we want to provide solutions and products that are good for our customers. And wow. it goes back to something, you know, in the early 90s, you know, when I went to buy, you know, I bought my first Mac and I, I want to say it was 1990 or 91. It was a Mac 91. 2 <laughs> There you go. Two years ago. Maybe it was 93. <laughs> Could have been 93. <laughs> I was an Apple II person, mostly before. We were selling some stuff for Mac, but I, I, had, I had my Apple II GS and was sure. a, an Apple II forever person. But <laughs> on the Mac, I call all these places up and nobody really wanted to talk to me. They just wanted to take my credit card and ship me a computer. It's like, I, I have questions. And you know, ultimately, yeah, I had to get the answers elsewhere. And I did get a Mac and that was all great. But it's like, this was not a good experience. You know, we, want our, we want to pull the curtain back. We want to, I mean, actually from day one with memory, we're going to show people Tell people, support people to do these upgrades themselves. If they're buying a drive, whatever they're buying, we want to make sure they understand what they're getting and that it's going to serve the needs they have. And it's also not about a commission, you know, to a sales rep or you know what, you know, how much can we sell somebody? You know, whether it's their budget is fifty dollars or five hundred dollars or five thousand dollars, we want to recommend the product, the solution that's right for their needs. Not well, geez, they got five thousand dollars. What can we sell that? To, to take that whole budget. If, it's a, if it is a you know, $300 drive, perfect. If they need to go closer, fine. But if somebody says they have a $50 budget, you know, we're not going to just try to sell them something that you know, meets the budget. It's got to fit the need. And wow. later I asked you know, one of these reps, you know, what, what's the program here? This was somebody I met him outside, of, uh, outside of a transaction. He said, well, you know, you know, our first, the, the first strategy we had with customers was to find out, you know, what the line was on their credit card. And yeah. once we knew what the line was on their credit card, yeah, <laughs> we're going to figure out what we, what package we can put together that, you know, fits within that line. It's like, that was, you know, not how we were going to uh, do business. I mean, we weren't looking for one-offs. Again, it's, wow. it's really about having customers and having the trust of customers for life. That is awesome. And because you've done that, because you've put in the work, because you've made sure that your customers are number one, you take care of their needs. Some would say you've achieved phenomenal success. I mean, you've done quite a bit. Uh, but what does success look like for you? What, is that, what does that word mean? And if it, do you feel like you've reached that space? You no, know, we have a fantastic team, you know, a fantastic uh, line of solutions. And you know, true success is you know, seeing that everybody that can benefit from those solutions has accessibility and you know, ideally is using those, those products. So you know, I, there's no, I mean, it's, I, there's really no stopping. I mean, success is, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm very grateful for, you know, where we are and very grateful for the team that, that we've got. And that's you know, the biggest thing is making sure that, you know, that team continues to grow, flourish, and you know, continues to be part of you know, what makes OWC, OWC, but, you know, it's, there's really never a point where you say, well, let's sit back and you know, it, it's good enough. I mean, there's always something more we can be doing. There's always more customers that can benefit from what we provide. And you know, we certainly want to see everybody who can benefit, you know, reaping those benefits. That's awesome. That's awesome. Considering you've, you've reached this level of success, you've built a great company. In 2007, you put together your headquarters, your brand new headquarters in Illinois. And you decided to go green. What did that mean? And why was that so important to you to make your official world headquarters be a green headquarters? Well, again, from day one, we've always been about extending the life of technology. And you can, I used to write a, how to say, the newsletters were a big thing. You used to write about it a lot in terms of, you know, maximizing the use of resources. We have finite resources. You know, we should always be maximizing those resources. And even before we put a green headquarters together, you know, we were minimizing uh, you know, what went into our waste stream. We were doing you know, act, really active recycling. We had a baler in our operation. 
you know, for the, uh, the, the paper and the, the packaging that could, you know, go out and be recycled. You know, we had relatively few uh, waste pickups because we kept so much out of the waste stream even before that was discussed. And it's just something that makes sense. And when we were ready to move and, and, and build our own operation, it was a, a, a perfect opportunity, obviously, to, to apply everything at work, saving life of technology. We're looking to be, you know, as conservational as possible with you know, the business side. Let's use technology to make our own business is well, lessen the impact, maximize again our own resource use and in, in providing you know, these services. So it was a great opportunity to, to build a building that would be an incredible, incredible uh, environment for our own team. I mean, lots of natural light, which has its own efficiencies in terms of reducing artificial light. You know, locally sourced. You know, we put pav pavers in instead of using asphalt pavers. A lot of water to go through into a bio bed. Uh, it's, it has limestone that breaks down uh, the stuff that comes out of cars. You know that instead of a retention pond where our retention or even detention pond where the stuff instead just accumulates. I grew up in the country. Woodstock, Illinois is you know very rural. Uh, back when modems were a big thing, it was. <laughs> modems. I thought it was kind of cool. Remember the noise? <laughs> you know, the <laughs> oh yeah. I love the. You know, US Robotics was you know, not was. Yeah, about an hour away, and we were having that U.S. Robotics HST, and you know, fourteen fourteen four was the top speed. I, I did think it was really cool that Woodstock, Illinois, that year had a population of fourteen thousand four hundred. Oh, wow! So, little, wow. you know, it was interesting coincidences, but none, nonetheless, you know, having grown up in the country, and, and, and now I have, in fact, I'd already uh, two thousand six. You know, my first son been born. I've had three daughters uh, since then. You know, there's absolutely been, big family. Thank you. Yes, sir. It keeps it, it definitely keeps things interesting. You know, <laughs> Most keeps definitely. interesting and, and if there's ever a dull moment, you know, they make sure there's none. Now, they they most certainly do. <laughs> they most certainly do. So More then so with <laughs> So with thirty years in the business, I mean, that's a long time. You've done a lot of great things and to think about all the things you've done along the way in 30 years, what would you say is probably your proudest achievement making it this long in the business? What would you say, go, that was a great moment. I'm glad we did X, you know? You know, we roll with the punches. I mean, it's what we do is, you know, I, I, there's not one, I guess, single thing that, uh, that I point to. I mean, certainly I'm thankful for, you know, all the great people that we've brought into the organization. You know, we've certainly pivoted. I mean, we, you know, started as primarily memories and accessories. We started building drives in the the 90s. We, you know, we saw opportunities to provide better solutions and storage, which really became a focus, a bigger focus after 2000. You know, what we did in the the zip upgrade market back in the late 90s was certainly unique and you know, had a, a lasting impact. Ex post facto, I'm really proud of. I mean, we took care of our customers, took care of you know, the, the whole Apple space when Apple let everybody beta test OS X and then decided he had to buy a new Mac if he wanted to actually use the release version. And we, we took care of that in a positive way. I mean, it was, it had a lot of unique support, but you know, over the, the course, I mean, we're just doing, you know, our, we're doing what we need to do to take care of our customers, to, to earn and, and maintain, you know, their trust and support. So it's, I, I you don't have a, you don't have a personal moment that feels like, man, I'm really, Excited that I achieved that thing, whatever that thing is. No personal moment, not just business, but you know, personal. Oh, personally, hey, then, you know, guys, you get married. You know, having, you know, how to say, <laughs> having a family. I mean, that's it was good to have something. You know, I, I've been working since I was young. I mean, that's business it was my entire was everything, and that's <laughs> you know, being able to start to you know, have a, a life outside of business. I think was is certainly something that I'm proud of. But, you know, you look at business, I mean, it's, you can't get, you know, you, you can't get star-crossed and, and sit back and pat yourself on the back really at any moment because it, you, it's an ongoing thing. I mean, you've, yes, we've gotten to where we've gotten, but you, you can't stop now. I mean, we're here because we take care of our customers you know, and that's what we're here to do. That's our job. I mean, that's, I, that's I, I, I don't know, you know, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> That's okay. No worries. Yeah, but you started to say something, and I'll, I'll curtail it. As you look into the future for OWC, because you said you never rest on your laurels, what do you see next in the next three to five years? Where do you want to go? What what is where is OWC headed? 
you know, we have some exceptional software technologies and that's something, you know, we've, you know, we've built hardware for, you know, three decades in one form or another, but software over the last decade and well, like, I guess, ex post facto counts even going back two decades, but software is a core that, you know, strengthens, supports and enhances, you know, the solutions that we provide today has really become at this, you know, this really the center you know, for the last seven, eight years. And while we promote the hardware side, because that's, we've always been, that's, that's kind of in our focus. <laughs> Software really makes a lot of this stuff heads and shoulders above anything else out there. And we really haven't given it a fair shake. We have not put our software solutions on the stage the way we should have. And over the next few years, you're going to see a lot more of our software technologies being highlighted and solutions that, you know, I frankly will benefit greatly, you know, our solutions and, and non OWC solutions that are going to get benefits from really strong core technologies that have been a benefit to everything we've been shipping, but are going to start to have a, a greater opportunity to stand on their, on their own. There's some pretty amazing things that you know, we have and that we're actually putting out there that very few people know about or don't realize are, are part of something that they have and really excited to you know, expand the the benefit that you know, the folks who receive from that those technologies. That is awesome. I'm super excited to see that. I'm a big software junkie myself, so I'm looking forward to, to seeing what's coming from OWC in that line. Uh, last question, man, and, and thanks for taking a few minutes just to talk to us. We really appreciate it. I'd love to hear your story. And you've all, it seems like you've just always been about customer service, doing the right thing. Uh, taking care of those around you, trying to find the right team. And, and those are the solid principles that I know most of us try to, to live by. But when I see them in, op- in action, I see a company that lives by them, it's such a blessing for me. I just feel like it, it reinforces that just do the right thing, man. You know, <laughs> you, you didn't put rocket scientists together to build this company. You, you took care of people when they needed to be taken care of. You gave them the right product for the right fit. And that's, you know, it seemed like it was pretty simple. You know what I mean? Um, it's so true. I, love, I mean, love business, to honestly... That. Businesses, it really feels common sense when folks ask me to talk about it. You now, it did so much of its common sense. I will say the experience, and that's by anybody who's you know who's getting into business and builds a business, you learn so much that you don't even realize along the way. And it, it is you know it is a lot of fun you know to actually help other businesses. And I, you know, bottom line is it, it's you, you learn how much you know when you you do start you know, helping folks that are just getting going, just getting off the ground. And it's, it's also a lot of fun sharing uh, experience, knowledge and such to, to see people you know, achieve their dreams. So here, here's the last question. You've accomplished so much. You've built a company. You've, you've taken care of a family. You've done a lot in your 40 years <laughs> of, of, planet, of planet Earth. What would you say to that little 14-year-old boy that started this whole thing? What advice have... <laughs> Have you learned that you could say, remember this, because you've done a lot. If you had the chance to go back and tell that 14-year-old boy one thing or two things, what would it be? You know, I'd probably talk about you know, not beating yourself up too much. I mean, not everything's going to be perfect. There's going to be a lot of mistakes along the way. But those are the best opportunities to learn. You know, they can really hurt in the, the short run, but you, you, know, you always have to push through them. But you know, you just you, you got to let it go and keep moving forward. You know, I did learn that you know, over time. But it, it, it's you know, starting a business and, and working on, on you know, something, especially putting your you know, blood, sweat, and tears into it. it can be lonely. It can be, be painful when something goes wrong. When something doesn't work out, you know, that's the kind of stuff that you know, it makes you wonder. You know, it, it can it, it can stop you in your tracks. Obviously, you know, we're still here today. Everything you know worked out, but. There were certainly moments where, you know, like, geez, am I really, you know, the right person to do this? And I, you know, how could I, how could I have made a mistake like that? But that's the best way to learn. I mean, if, you, if you're not making any mistakes, then you're not learning. And I have to say, making the mistakes early in the business is a lot less costly than making them later on. So it's, <laughs> I'm glad, I'm in, in hindsight, really glad that I made the mistakes I made when I made them. I mean, that was, and had the opportunity to make those mistakes. I, I do wish I'd, yeah, you know, I say, I let myself sleep, sleep a little bit more and not <laughs> let all of them get under, this, under my skin the way they did. 
Wow. Wow. Well, what a story. And again, we so appreciate you just taking a few minutes to share it. And, uh, you know, we want to let everybody know how do they find OWC. If you're looking for computer products and you want to get the right price with the right person on the phone to help you with your service, how do they get a hold of you guys over there? What's the best way? Yeah, they can go to OWC.com and check out the family companies or MaxSales.com has has always been and remains our flagship uh, site. So, Check us out. Really appreciate that. And anybody getting going in business, I mean, you know, perseverance you know, is, the, is the big thing. You know, stay focused on that dream. Stay focused on that goal and, and don't let anybody say you can't do it. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, thank you, everyone, for taking a few minutes to check out this episode of Chasing the Impossible. We sure do appreciate having Larry on, and we send him blessings to him and his family. And, and if you want to patron a good company, go out and look at OWC. These guys are doing it right. And of course, if you enjoyed your segment you see here, please hit us with a like or subscribe to the channel. We want to get you the most updated content as soon as it's available. Thanks again, Larry, for being here for us. I hope you guys are staying safe out there, and we'll see everybody soon. Take care, guys. Bye-bye now.